And absolutely delighted to say we're joined by David Ornstein from The Athletic and uh, broadcaster and former player as well, Gabby Zakwani. Guys, great to see both of you. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out this morning to join us on early kickoff. And of course, we have to start with Chelsea. Uh, David, I I'll start with you. Um, what do you make of everything that's happened in the last few days? head spinning Pete isn't it it's a real seismic moment for English football for the Premier League for European and world football I guess because in the time that Roman Abramovich has owned the club what 19 years they've been the most successful English team and one of the most successful that the game has ever seen they're currently European and world champions and this hits them really like a bolt out of the blue certainly the players who found out on the bus on the way to Norwich uh, yesterday Many people right to the top of the club had no prior warning. It was reported that the Premier League found out just 15 minutes before. Of course, we knew this may have been coming because Roman Abramovich put the club up for sale amid the threat of sanctions. But when you spoke to people around him and the situation, they thought if he really feared that the sanctions were going to come, he would have sold earlier. He would have done it overnight for a price that ensured he got the money or an element of the money that he wanted. But... The fact that he in his official statement said that this was going not to be uh, fast-tracked suggested that he didn't think the sanctions were going to come. And when they did yesterday, it was really one of those wow moments that places the future, the existence of Chelsea, into question. Questions I'm sure we're going to get into now. Um, but it is really a massive moment uh, for the club and it leaves a lot of uncertainty over how they're going to operate going forward. Yeah, Gabby, as David says, there's a lot to unpack here. What's your reaction to what's been happening at Chelsea over the last few days? I've been very surprised that it's, um, it's gone this far, if I'm honest. I know there's been um, a lot of talk. Um, the polit politics is sort of taking over everything, not just football at the moment. But there are a lot of people who are going to suffer out of this who have nothing to do with the situation. So they're really going for really the heart of Chelsea and um, making everything about Chelsea and um, it's a big problem but what we've seen is that they are they seem to be sticking together um, whether it's right or wrong uh, but they seem to to have this close ranks um, unity where they believe um, that everyone is against them and um, that's probably what's going to help them get through this because uh, on the pitch it's not showing uh, at the moment uh, but everything outside eventually seems like it will catch up you make a great point there, Gabby, about the people that will suffer um, around this situation. Uh, David, I guess the fans are, are going to be suffering, aren't they? That uncertainty now that surrounds them and surrounds the future of their football club. Um, should those fans be concerned? Yeah, definitely, because we don't know what the future holds for Chelsea. Uh, we've seen these restrictions placed upon them. That means that they can't sell, sign, renew contracts. Um, they've got budgets on away travel. They can't sell merchandise. Um, the club megastore was closed, the hotel too. Uh, we saw the Chelsea fans again singing the name of Roman Abramovich because many of them just see the success that he's brought to the club, the way that he's transformed their um, passion and given them some of the days of their lives and now they don't know what players they're going to be seeing playing in front of them they don't know if they're going to be seeing a team at all now I think the way the government has treated this in terms of judging Chelsea to be a special community asset means we probably will see <coughs> Chelsea complete the season and continue into the future um, that they'll have a new owner at some point and in in a different way I'm sure and, th and that makes me think that We've seen the last of Chelsea as we knew it under Roman Abramovich. It's never going to quite be the same again. What they have to sort out now is the immediate going concern, how they're going to continue to operate, where the money's going to come from. We don't know what cash reserves Chelsea have. Of course, the money that comes into the club in terms of revenues is going to be frozen. So it's up to the authorities to decide how that's going to be used. If they're going to be able to amend the license that the government has granted to allow the club to be sold, which currently it can't be, the process process is being paused and what the government's priority is uh, in their eyes is that Roman Abramovich sees no benefit from this that he doesn't see any of the proceeds but I think it's in the best interest of everybody that the club uh, gets sold as soon as possible so that money can come into the club otherwise I've got no idea how they're going to continue to function but 
This is a fast moving story. It's changing by the day, the minute, the hour uh, and the weeks and months ahead are going to be crucial to determine um, Chelsea's existence, really. So um, it's one that's quite difficult to uh, predict or explain, but uh, there's incredible cause for concern among fans, as you say, Pete, but also players, staff, administrators, executives, right from the bottom of the club all the way up to the top. Well, Gabby, you mentioned a moment ago just those uh, people that David has just mentioned, the unity amongst them and how it's not impacted things on the pitch. However, how much can financial issues or problems off the field impact a dressing room from your experience? I think everyone will have their own points um, on the situation. Uh, but what we've seen at the moment is that on the pitch, they seem to be together in this. And it may be the fact that they're in a good position in the table. Uh, they have to see this proof. Um, and that's probably what's helping to help them drive through. If they have nothing to play for, it may be a little bit more toxic uh, than what we've seen. But at the moment, they're pulling together and not letting it affect it on the pitch. And Tuchel especially has been very coy on the way he's been talking about the situation. He, he says exactly what we think on the outside, uh, but he's doing the job on the pitch. Um, and I think they're just pushing and trying to get as far as they can because at the end of the day, the higher they finish, the better financially it will be for the football club. Um, at the moment, things on the side ain't helping them out and things that are happening in the government ain't helping them out. So they have to find a way to keep the season positive and still have the fans have something to shout about because mm. at the moment, everything that, they, that is going on outside is pulling the strings um, on their wallets and they can't really function. Yeah, absolutely. And Gabby, this is a tricky one for you, I, I appreciate. But if you were in that dressing room, would you be getting your agent to put the feelers out? <laughs> no, I think many will start having that, um, that thought, really. And I think it's because you can see, as David has said, it won't be, it will impact the club in some way and it's hard to run a club with no financial resources uh, coming in um, we don't know how much reserves they've got they've got big players on big wages and it's only going to be a moment in time where it will start affecting uh, the club it will start affecting wages it will start affecting other things uh, to do with finances and there's no way they can run the club under the current situation so i would think there'll be players or there'll be agents already putting the feelers out for their players uh, worried about their own position. So it could, it's going to work like that. I think it will be a very tricky situation. If they can see the season through, I think the summer uh, will be very crucial uh, to see where they end up. Mm. Bella, that's a cracking question, but putting poor old Gabby on the, on the spot like mm. that, goodness me. Sorry about that, Gabby. Look at it get out. Uh, Come back again, won't you? <laughs> uh, uh, David, I mean, it, it, it is an interesting point. How will players be feeling? Yeah. We saw our own Jamie Carragher suggesting that Thomas Tuchel should, uh, Man United should go for Thomas Tuchel and this sort of thing. I mean, it's really tough for, for Chelsea supporters, that, but it's something they're going to see, isn't it? Their players being linked with moves away, their top players and the managers being linked with moves elsewhere. I mean, it just underlines how, what an uncertain time it is. Yeah, there's no doubt that their futures are going to come into question. Uh, and that extends to Thomas Tuchel. It, it extends to the executives like Marina Granovskaya and Bruce Buck. But in terms of the football side of things, you know, Thomas Tuchel spoke last night and said he's proud and he, he's the manager for now. But he doesn't know what the coming months and years are going to hold. And we saw reports coming out yes, just yesterday suggesting that Manchester United are keeping an eye on his situation. Of course, they need to appoint a permanent manager this summer and he's one of the top uh, managers in the game. I'm sure many clubs would like to take him if he was available. They've got three notable players out of contract in the summer. Antonio Rudiger, Andreas Christensen and Cesar Aspilicueta. Um, unless this situation changes quite dramatically, they're going to be leaving as free agents. Um, you've got the possibility of big name players who are worth a lot of money, just take Romelu Lukaku for instance, being sold if Chelsea need to raise money. That's clearly a potential repercussion of all of this. Um, so it's anyone's guess where it goes. And Gab raises a good point. Like, I don't know how they've managed to focus in this situation with all this going on around them. Just before the match yesterday, they lost their main front of shirt sponsor, three telecommunications. More may go. What if they were to lose Nike, which is an even bigger deal on their shirt as well? And you've got the players finding out about this on their phones. And, and just like us, the, the lack of clarity is probably quite crippling. So it really does 
go to show their professionalism, their quality as a group, that they're grinding out results like that. And who knows, you know, they've already played one final this season. They might play another in the Champions League. Um, they're pushing for a, for a top three finish in the Premier League too. Um, so you've got to admire their sort of professionalism, manager, staff and players in this unenviable situation. David, just staying with you for a moment, one thing that we haven't really discussed, do you um, feel that it's concerning how a sporting decision has been taken by the government rather than the game's governing body? Well, I think the phrases sport and politics shouldn't mix, but we know they are inextricably linked. And when you are talking about somebody who has been owning a club since, what, 2003, um, and that's a significant player within a significant sport uh, within this country, within the European game. Uh, and unfortunately, the two sort of worlds have collided and the government is looking into the role of Russian oligarchs, politicians, businessmen, and Roman Abramovich is one of those. There will be many people saying, well, the government has a lot to answer for itself. They welcome these sort of um, people in and embrace them to an extent. And people like Roman Abramovich have overseen a lot of good in terms of Chelsea's success, in terms of what he's done around the fight against anti-Semitism. But at the same time, they feel they have had to act, uh, given the events of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and they have deemed... Roman Abramovich to have very close links to Vladimir Putin, links that he has gone on the record or his representatives have to deny. And although the sanctions weren't immediate, they clearly in the British government felt they then had enough evidence to take this action. He had already decided that he wanted to sell it, that his time was up, that he'd won it all, and given the current climate, it was time to go. So I think it's inevitable that the government were going to get involved in this. But one thing remains to be seen is whether the football authorities will take their own sanctions from the government's lead and that's a, a very interesting um, predicament for them going forward. Yeah, it certainly feels like a, a huge moment in the history of the sport, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. Gabby, this have an impact on the rest of the Premier League as well? Could it unfairly impact the rest? Well, it could in terms of, I think, they've got an advantage um, at the moment. Um, so you could look at it that way um, and I think just maybe the whole the whole race at the moment is um, of the Premier League it's maybe given to the advantage of teams trying to catch Chelsea or teams trying to get away from Chelsea because this eventually you think will start have some sort of impact on the club um, like we said for the, the financial things outside the club will eventually lead onto the pitch because of the uncertainty of the players uncertainty of the staff just in the around the place in general. So I think that's the only way, but they will see themselves as, as um, they've been targeted uh, because a lot of people don't know exact, the exact story or Abramovich, Abramovich's links to, to the Russian government exactly um, because it hasn't been put on paper exactly what they've been um, sanctioned for. Um, that's why it's causing a little bit of uncertainty and it's giving the fans something to shout about and to think that everything is against them.